Hello and welcome to the Anim Dojo podcast. Uh, if you've been watching these before, you'll know what it's all about and what Anim Dojo is. But if you don't, uh, Anim Dojo is an online platform and our mission is to give everyone a helping step up, step up the career ladder in animation and the VFX industries, regardless of your age, location, wealth or time availability. And we do that on our website, which we kind of call an animation gym. Uh, where we've got loads of workouts, live streams, challenges, and feedback sessions, all geared around getting you the job you want and to hit the ground running when you do that. Uh, so uh, my name is Tom Box. I'm co-founder of Anim Dojo, and I'm here with the superb Anim Dojo crew. We have uh, Katie. Hi, uh, I'm community manager at Anim Dojo, and I'm also a recruiter at Blue Zoo. And Beta. Uh, hi, I'm Bader. I'm a uh, co-founder of Anim Dojo and uh, anim sh animation supervisor at Axis. Cool. And Grace. Hello, I'm marketing coordinator for Anim Dojo and Blizzy. Cool. Well, uh, well, it's good to see all your all your faces. And also, we have two guests, which I'll get on to shortly. So, in this podcast, we're continuing our series, looking into what particular animation job titles are. Uh, in the last episode, we spoke to uh, Tenor and Nicholas, finding out what character designers do, what skills, sets, it suits, how they got their jobs, and advice for how people can get to that job role themselves. So in this episode, we're joined by Almu and Francesco. Hello. Hello. Uh, Almu, would you want to introduce yourself? Yep. Um, I'm Almu Redondo, and I'm our director at Texas. Excellent. And Francesco? Uh, hello guys, thank you for having me here and uh, my name is Francesco Mazza and I work uh, as an art director for Blue Zoo. Excellent, so um, thanks both for joining us today and hopefully you'll have got that uh, from those introductions that we're talking about art directors today. And this series is very much about finding out about those roles when you might be a little bit kind of almost too embarrassed to ask. Beda, what, why did you want to do one on art direction today? Well, I think that main, I'm sure that people might have the same questions I had when I was starting out. Um, there were so many roles that I heard being thrown around and hopefully we will also get to those in future podcasts. Um, and uh, I, I do remember that you know, art director sounded fancy, sounded cool. I just didn't really know what it was all about. Um, I mean, obviously I do now, but when I was starting out, it was it was something very vague. And uh, it's just one of those things that you might be embarrassed to ask, or you might think it's something and it turns out it's completely something else. Um, so yeah, I thought it'd be great to, to bring uh, some, you know, really talented and, you know, helpful people who would be happy to share their experience and let us know what, what it's like from a day-to-day you know, day -day basis and you know, talk to you guys about it. Cool. Well, hopefully we can answer some of those questions today for people who are wondering what an art director actually does. So um, I know a lot of people who don't know what an art director does might think they just point at people's artwork all day, telling them to, to make it better. Is, is that the case? Who wants to start off? <laughs> uh, I, I can start if you want. Uh, Go on then. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think I think uh, it's like that's part of the job. I think uh, that uh, that's just a partial way of describing it. There is probably a twenty percent that's exactly that, like uh, like talking to people and say, okay, this should be on style, and the style is set, and just is taking care of the, the quality of the of the show and all the all the design producer is, is consistent through the time. So uh, like you don't see a different balance of quality and style. So for sure it's a lot of telling people to do it better or, or to do it in another way. Uh, but I think that's just partial. I would say probably 20 or 30% of the job is that. And there is uh, all of, uh, a lot of time managing as well. Uh, there is also, there is also a, a creative part of the job in which like you had the chance to draw. Uh, I think uh, one of the misconceptions that I had, so I'm guilty about that, when I was probably 16, uh, I was playing a game named uh, Sly Raccoon. It's a game, uh, PS2 or PS1 game. It was about this uh, this raccoon who was like a thief and was stealing and doing stuff. And uh, I, was, I was seeing the credits and I see the art director role and I started thinking, oh, I want to be that guy. I want to be the art director. And I was thinking this guy, 
uh, just drawing all day and and doing everything by himself, like and just giving drawing to people, say, okay, you should do like that. And uh, actually, like uh, now I'm doing the job and I, I realize that it's much less about drawing. It's uh, like probably you draw a couple of weeks or one month and then you have other people uh, that follow the style. Or actually, a lot of people are involved and help you finding the style. Sometimes you know nothing about the show. And it's more of a theme job rather than a personal job, like a personal kind of taste and creativity, really. Oh, uh, Yeah. Yeah, I feel very similar. I always had this idea that is this kind of fancy genius, you know, that has a big room and, and it has just like this poster, you know, that has uh, that says genius at work, you know, and he's just doing all these things. But actually, once you do it, it's, it's mainly about teamwork, you know, and how to communicate the ideas and make sure that everybody has what they need and we are all working together in the same style and it's, it's basically about the team, you know, like it's, it's often said that you are just as good as your crew is. And, and it's so true, you know, it's just everyone uh, make make sure that you ignite the best in people, you know, and, and encourage them and making sure that we are all in the same train going forward and doing the best. And yeah, it's, it's just about a lot of clarity and communication, how to say the best information in the least amount of words, especially now that we are, you know, in remote work and so on. And we mainly work on chats and, and little notes, you know, it's, it's super important this the key for the role i guess yeah so i guess my my question on that is in in the, in the most kind of like simplified form what is the the key purpose of an art director what would happen on a show if they didn't have an art director for example what what's what's the the the, the real crux of the job involved okay it's, it's basically like make sure that everything looks the best as possible, you know, and, and there is a cohesive treatment of the style and the light and all the designs, you know, everything works together. And and yeah, it's, it's really like the, the motions come across. Like, would you make sure that you trans, translate visually what is in the script and what is the director's intent into the screen? And in the way you establish the style, if it's something that you do, sometimes the style is already given. If you are doing a service work, it's maybe it's a big IP that has an already established style, you know, so you just make sure that that gets across in all the departments, in all the steps of the, of the process. In some other parts, if it's a little bit more creative, if you have to create the own style, you know, of the show, it's just making sure that you you create something thrilling, something unique, and something also that serves the mood of the story. You know, not every story uh, needs the same style, you know, as, as we can see, you know, in, in certain treatments in animation, especially. You can tweak any line to make sure that the emotion comes across, and it's something that you can only do in animation, really. That's the true potential of animation. So it's just making sure that the choices that you do are the, the proper ones and that uh, they, are, um, they look the best possible and you, you just keep that that mark of quality, you know. Yeah. So it, for an animation, if you're kind of responsible for the, the the quality of the visual art style, that sounds quite a quite a pressure. Is it? It's, do you feel that it, it, having that responsibility? It has its challenges. Yeah. I mean, is is something that is, that is on top of you, but it is fine. You know, it's like. Um, as long as if you have a very solid team, you know, and every, everybody has really good skills and sharpen the skills and, and it's, it's less so because everybody's together in the boat, you know, so yeah, yeah. There, there are certain responsibilities, but it's fine, you know, because it's shared and, and you're all together. Yeah. I want, I want to ask you, because um, we've talked a lot on this podcast about being a director and what that means. I was wondering um, what's the difference between an art director and a director and how does your role kind of interact with the director of a project? Um, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. So uh, I think uh, something that we have to like be sure is that is the director the director visions that is kept during the old show. So it's actually like we can give suggestions to the directors and say, okay, uh, maybe this could be like this and like that. But in the end, I think something that an art director should never forget is that uh, the directors is not always right because that's not true, but 
actually is always right in terms of that show. I mean, if the directors, because the story is always the king of everything and, and drives the design. And something that I think a lot of people forget, and uh, sometimes uh, I, I do forget as well, because like we like, we, our directors usually are really imaginative people and they fell in love with a picture or, or, or an image that they have, and they wanted to pursue that. And sometimes that doesn't work with the story. So uh, the, the, the relationship between an art director and a director is, is, is just a matter of balance. So the art director should remind himself every day that each thing that he does is in favor of the story, and the director is in charge of the story. Uh, so that means that uh, I think this is an issue that lots of art directors have, and I, I, I sometimes have that I, I fell in love with that one concept, I fell in love with one idea because I think, okay, that's going to look amazing on screen and I love it. And then the restaurant comes and say, okay, that doesn't work for a story. And I just say, oh, come on, that's, that's just <laughs> nice. I love it. I mean, I, I, I would like to see that on screen and, and kids will love it. Uh, but in the end, like I, I spend one day, I think about it. And in the end, if that doesn't work for the story, it doesn't work. It doesn't work even if it looks amazing. And uh, that's the kind of relationship relation that, uh, our directors always have with our directors usually is it's just talking about uh, about ideas and uh, in the end directors need to really steer the project and yeah uh, I guess that 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 does take a, a, a strong from a director that takes quite a lot of uh, leadership or guts in the sense of if someone spent ages working on something like that and it's it ultimately it doesn't work for the story I guess some people might try and be too nice about it go okay we'll use it a detriment to the story just because you spent a long time working it so from a, a and i think that's one of the things that makes a director's job really hard they have to make brutal decisions that are going to annoy a lot of people who have put kind of weeks of work into things that, that, that never used so i think that's maybe part of the director's role that people don't always uh, uh think about yeah yeah yeah, and also to be able to say, to know when to say yes and when to say no, you know, what things to prioritize and what things to, to focus more. Uh, so if you are able to analyze what is the most important thing for the story, you can spare more time, more refinement, or try to put a little bit more impact in that. But it's just to, to yeah, to know when to shift uh, from one side or the other. So um, in terms of, you, sorry, go on, Bader. Well, I, was, I wanted to ask about what you guys were just talking about. I mean, surely, you know, it, it's it's always in, in the stories, you know, always, stories always king. What, you know, how, how, how would you approach if you did have a situation where it, it doesn't really affect story and it's more, I mean, you don't, you do know that you are right. I mean, you guys would probably have, have dealt with that, obviously, in the past. If, you know, I think everyone deals with that where sometimes, you know, you're one hundred percent sure. I mean, how how do you approach that? Not just with yourself, but with your team, because obviously, like you are guiding also other people to create all these pieces of work. Um, I mean, what, is that part of the job that you anticipated having to deal with? For uh, I guess my question is like, uh, were there was this more of a surprise for you coming into this role, or were you expecting it to be this way, where you would have to deal with this kind of situation who wants to take that <laughs> <laughs> do you want to go for them first oh uh, yeah i'm happy to go uh, i think uh i wasn't expecting that i think i i was expecting more the fun part maybe because i'm i'm an optimistic so i was expecting <laughs> more uh, the fun part of it and Actually, I, I don't know if you all more agree, like being an art director sometimes, uh, actually quite often, is dealing with hard kind of discussion, uh, also like always like avoiding conflicts. I think uh, like one of the main skill, uh, more than the artistic skills, more than the communication is just being able to be really diplomatic with things, like uh, uh, re really diplomatic and keeping the peace around the theme like also like uh when there are different visions and sometimes like artists working with you are have great talents also directors have great talents and like nobody's right like an idea uh, has different point of view and lots of ideas would be amazing uh so how do you tackle that that's 
this just balance and diplomacy, I guess. Just yeah, uh, yeah. What, what do you exactly. think, Yeah, yeah, and I think it's also so key to to study your case, you know, and have a lot of arguments, you know, to back up your opinion and and the reasons why you are really keen of doing this specific solution, but it's also knowing your battles, you know, there are some times that even if you think that it should be in a certain way, if it's really not that important, you know, and maybe you should try to focus your energies in other thing, it's something that, you know, you can get, get away with it and try to get loose, you know, in certain parts and really fight the things that are really, really key for what you are trying to achieve. And nowhere to spend your energy in terms of what battles are worth it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was working once with a, it was a screenwriter and he gave me this, this trick that he does sometimes that if he really wants to get away with something, he fights another thing very intensely, but in the end he lets the other part take it. So in that way, they kind of own him one. So then he goes for the thing that he really wanted. It's a mind <laughs> trick. Yeah. Good, good, good tip. So yeah. there's psychology there. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted to really ask what your, I don't know if you have an average day, but what, what is your, your as an art director, what does the, the, the normal day look like in terms of the different types of things you might do? Uh, Almu, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, it's mainly 80% is briefs and paint overs. That's the mainly right. all the things that you do all the time, especially when you get into production. If you're lucky and you get at the beginning of the project and you really need to establish the style, you get to do so, many, so much concept art or color script sometimes if you have the time you know, for that. And that's great, you know. I think that's the part that we all love, like just to be creative and sit down and do the work and work with the team, you know, next to you. But, but overall, it's, it's always just that, you know, just giving guidance and a lot of meetings, reviews with all the departments and making sure that, yeah, that vision and those checks are through, you know, all the, all the way. But yeah, yeah. it's maybe that. Francesca? Uh, yeah, usually, usually every day I feel it's really different. I mean, the, the thing that really surprises me that you go from like working on like trying to solve a problem on a main character that you say, okay, that's going to be a key for the story. So you think about it and the eyes, how they should work, how it should work. And, and like, it's a really complex thing. And then after one minute, you are discussing how the hinge of the door should work because the models have done it. And then the rigger cannot do it, cannot, cannot rig it because the door is, is, is not working. <laughs> and then the other seconds you are discussing, I don't know how a light bulb should, should work. And, like there are a lot of things which like I think an art director doesn't have idea because uh, like it doesn't mean that an art director is an expert of light, light bulbs for example but like you, you need to you have to become one that. really quickly don't you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like four seconds and you're like probably people waiting for you for an answer and you say okay just let me google some light bulbs and you have to study that so I think that's really fascinating because you never know what you're gonna learn that day. So now I know how hinges okay. work uh, on the doors, <laughs> and now I know how a light bulb will work with the with the wire, the, the wire frame. So. so does that mean that you need to have almost like a thirst for wanting to just keep learning and exploring? Like, is that part of it? Like to uh, just never that not that it's open ended. It's not like when you're on a day off you go and do it, but like is part of the job really enjoying this research part? Uh, probably, yes. Probably, probably. Uh, you know, it's, it's so complex because sometimes it's, it's just work. Sometimes you say, oh God, I, I want to do something. Like, oh, I want to focus on this color painting because it's just fun. And then you have to research how a light bulb, light bulb works. And uh, like at that point, you probably hate it a bit. You say, no, I want to do something more fun of that. But I think... I don't know, our directors, the, the, all our directors that I, I met like during my life, they're really, uh, like, they're complex people. Like they, they, they like a bit to, they, they like the challenge. They like when sometimes they face some really hard days in which like they are doing things that they don't want. Just because they then come back to something they enjoy. I think they, they really enjoy. I don't know how if you feel that. They enjoy the, the balance. I think all the concept art kind of career I think probably also animation is full of up and downs. It's full of up and downs. Like one day you feel like you are great and you are doing greatly. And like in three hours, everything changes and everything is terrible. And all your work <laughs> is terrible. And I think like the art director job is that, uh, but with a multiplier, like you feel one day, all the team is going amazing and the project and everybody say, Oh yeah, that's a nice job. And the next day, 
everything is going terrible and everybody's <laughs> a roller coaster. Yeah, That's it's the land of the creative. In. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think you never get tired. Yeah, you, you, you research a lot. You just have to research and do things and it's all the roller coaster really. Like yeah. you are never still, like you're never uh, you, you never get bored, I think. Yeah. Do you agree with that, Almi? Yeah, totally. And and I also think that an art director should be someone that is up to date, you know, with trends and so forth. And and so you need to be constantly updating yourself and looking, you know, and keep an eye on things because you you might need to be asked to replicate something or do something. So it's really important to be constantly researching totally. Yeah. I, I can't. Can... Uh, go on, Katie. I was just going to ask, and it kind of ties into what you've been talking about and said before, um, but you've spoken about kind of projects where you've had to establish a style at the beginning. And I guess you guys have, um, at the risk of kind of asking you to spill all your secrets, <laughs> um, <laughs> how do you kind of adapt to something when you have to create a style that's, that kind of hasn't really existed or it's completely different from something you've done before? How do you push yourself to be able to create that, I guess, is the question. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's, it's uh, having a huge knowledge of art in general, you know, like all the past art, the past that is being done at the moment, and, and in every medium as well, you can take so much inspiration from comics, from films, from everything. Like, for example, I try to go to some events that really charge my inspiration, like, um, Angoulême, for example, is a really great one for animation because you can draw so much from comics. It's so exploratory in France and they have so much freedom and they have these indie sections, you know, where people is doing whatever, you know, whatever they feel like. And it's so, so great. And you get to meet the artist and, and talk to them and see the, the process that they are having, you know, why they do the things that they do. So having a huge mental library is, is for sure really important, but also having a really solid knowledge about cinematography and how you can use you know, your, your, your camera, your lighting, your compositions to tell certain stories and increase, like create some moments. And, and art and art in general, color is super important for an art director. So the more you know and light and color, uh, absolutely. And, and yeah. So on more that, you know, on that note, so I, I think you've, you've kind of, there's obviously two, there's the, the, the hard skills, the, the, the artistic skills, and there's the soft skills, which I wrote a few talked about. You talked about multitasking, delegation, leadership, diplomacy, and time management. So that's, that sounds quite a, a, a list of soft skills. What would you say is, are they equally important to have both? Or is the, the visual skills more important than the, those soft skills? Because it is more of a, 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 a director position. So obviously, those skills are very important. I was wondering what what people think in terms of which, if they're if they're equally important or if one is more important than the other. Uh, Amri, do you want to take that? Yeah, yeah, I can. Um, yeah, um, most probably contrary to what you might think at the beginning, I think the the mindset and the the social and practical skills is more even more important than the. The visual ones, you know, uh, you you can find really really good artists, but if they are not able to communicate uh, why something is working, why not? If they don't have that analytical mind, and also in the way they communicate with the team, they deliver the notes and so on, that can be a little bit uh, detrimental for the team. So I will say that is the social skills and the you know the managing skills are even more important than than the other ones because you are able to manage the team better and bring the yeah. best of everyone. Francesca? Uh, yeah, I, I totally with, um, I, I thought the artistic skill, and the, the thing is that I, it was my goal, like for like six, seven years, it was my goal. I, I didn't know what that meant, but I said, okay, I want to be art director. And uh, I was just focusing on my, on my artistic skills. I, I just was focusing on that. I said, yeah, I, I should draw better. I should do this. I should do that. And I was really putting like all my effort into one, I do say only one egg on one basket, obviously. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> putting all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I realized, like, doing this job, I realized that that matters probably only 50%, actually even less. I will say even, like, 40%, even, even 35%. I think even, for example, a producer who's really, really good at managing as soon as she got the style, and that's not even about drawing, it's just about getting the style of something. Also, the producer can add direct something, I think, because uh, 
it, she, she or he has the if has the the lead, leadership skills, if he has the communication skills, I think that could already do it. I think artistic skills is, is a plus for sure, and, and actually, actually, it's needed most of the time. Uh, but I wouldn't say that you can do an, uh, that director if you only have artistic skills. I've seen guess, amazing artists that just cannot do it. Just cannot do yeah, it. and what, what's the reason for not doing it? Is that not being able to communicate what their, their vision, I guess, I guess any director role is all about having that vision and communicating yeah. that vision and bringing a team together to hit that vision. Yeah. So what, what, what do you think those, the, those people who didn't quite manage to get the art director role, what, what can people focus on to make sure they, they, they do get it given lots of kind of practice or whatever uh, I think I think they should really focus and that's that's a soft skill to develop during during your life like you can you can develop that soft skill even at the pub it's not something you should you, you can try at, at home by yourself it's, it's all about team it's all about team is uh, I, I think I don't know even playing a sport with the team is more important than staying 10 days on a desk drawing I think right. just drawing, do that because it's fun. It's, it's something that is key for the job for, for a lot of aspects. But having a team, for example, or also even, uh, I don't know, even practicing some active listening to people, like listening to what people are saying, that's quite key for the job. I mean, like when directors talk, and sometimes they talk a lot about stories, you should just listen, be focused on what they're saying, because then you have to pass this information to the team. And if you were not listening, like all the team, like 10 people probably don't know what to do because you're distracted. Yeah. So uh, if you're just there doodling or not listening, it's not a, <laughs> not a good way to go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I love not to artists, for example, that they are amazing. And artists usually are quite introvert people. They like to just sit and draw. And... Uh, they could be amazing artists and they can do amazing pictures, but then maybe they cannot talk to people and that's not our director material really. Yeah. Almu, is yeah. that do you Yeah. Do you see totally that? agree. Yeah, yeah. And and also I think uh, something that I found is it's very important to have a deep knowledge about the pipeline. So you know uh, how that everything is going to affect later on and you know the times, you know, and the processes so you are able to give better feedback because sometimes you, you can get trapped in something very specific, you know, but maybe that that's not so important or we don't have so much time for that or, you know, it can be solved in other ways. So that's, that's something important to have as well. Yeah. And I guess, so it'd be interesting to know how you, both of you kind of progressed up to that. I know... Uh, Francesco, you said it as a, a real ambition of yours, because I guess with these mm -hmm. roles, they sometimes you can find yourself kind of more organically uh, or naturally stepping up to that role if you've been mm -hmm. in the studio a while. Otherwise, you can like just, you know, have your heart set on it. And it's your ambition. What, what, it'd be interesting to know what your both of your paths were to how you got to that art director role. Uh, Francesco, do you want to go first at that? Um, yeah, sure. I, uh, I, I was 16, I remember, and I was studying. I was studying math. And I, I really wanted to draw. Uh, and I say, okay, I'm going to do this discussion to my family. I say, I'm, I want to draw for life. And I actually didn't know what I wanted to do. I was playing PlayStation and I was seeing like that there was this, this kind of art director's role and concept artist. I didn't know what a concept, concept artist was. But I thought, okay, that should look awesome. Uh, <laughs> and then I, I had a chance to speak to my family and say, okay, I want to study that. And I didn't know where to start. It's not like now. It was probably 10 years ago. And really, there were not, not information, there were not podcasts as this one, for example. Uh, so I have found a 3D school. I thought, okay, I have seen the, on the billboard, there was a 3D character. And I say, okay, I want to do that. And that was, I don't know if that was a waste of time, but I studied three years of 3D. So I've spent time uh, rigging, modeling. Uh, and at the end of three years, I say, okay, I've done it, but that's not really what I wanted to do. I wanted to draw. Like, I'm not drawing at all. I was doing all the other parts of the I'm job. I'm sure a lot of people must feel that who has been yeah. in a similar position. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, so, so like, for, for who's listening, if you, if you really want to do a director, uh, uh, I think it's important to know 3D, but I think an illustration course, for example, would have been more, more, more beneficial for me. If I could come back, I would have done more illustration uh, course uh, now for example I know how to rig but 
that's not necessarily so important. I mean, uh, yeah. A anyway, after that, I I've been called uh, after the, the university. After I studied today, I've been called from Kazakhstan. I was in my garden and I received a call from a guy working in Kazakhstan say, okay, man, like we have seen your portfolio. Uh, like we have a studio here and we are just six people. We are doing a TV series. Do you want to join us? Uh, you, you can even draw if you want. You can you will do 3D, but I see you have a couple of drawings on, on your portfolio. So why don't you come here and do a bit of everything? So, okay, uh, I went to my mom and said, okay, mom, I'm, I'm flying to Kazakhstan for like 18 months. Uh, oh, what the hell are you doing? I said, okay, mom, I, I, I want to do that. And just I've been, I've been there. The, the city was uh, Almaty, uh, and I spent actually eighteen months there. Uh, oh, wow. And the studio, the studio was a small one. We were six people. It was so hard to to stay there. Like nobody was speaking English. It was all Russian, and I had no friends. So it was like starting a new life without knowing yeah. anybody. Uh, I think it was quite key. Uh, because I had a chance to do a bit of everything. So I was modeling, uh, doing a comp, doing a bit of concept. And then I say, after that, I say, okay, I just want to do one aspect of it. So uh, I see a lot of like students that are really confused. And like the first year, uh, they always ask me a question, oh, what, what should I do? Uh, and I say, just try everything. And eventually it's going to come. So uh, if, yeah. and oh. after, after, after that, I've been to Milano to do concept art then uh, blue zoo concept art again uh, and then one day the director called me on the project and said okay uh, do we want to art direct this it was gojetters the first gig that i've done as art director uh, yeah. cool. yeah. that's a quite a story i guess that's, uh, that's like a wild if you want to show it shows that determination that if you really want if you've got your heart set on the thing we go to Still Russia for eighteen months and just yeah. <laughs> start it. <laughs> but I think you know it shows you that sometimes you you got to do what you got to do, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How about you, Amy? Totally. For me, it was quite the opposite. It's not something that I was really looking for. In it, the role, just phoned me, you know, in a way like. I, I was just like asked to do it because they, they, my managers and my directors saw that I was doing it already because I'm, I'm really social and, and a lot of people of the team was already asking me for feedback to go over the desk, you know, and see, hey, yeah, well, uh, can I ask your opinion? What do you think of this? And I was teaching them, uh, you know, in the breaks and so on, how to do stuff, uh, doing some paint over sometimes. And I, I like to, you know, to socialize a lot and be with everyone. So they just told me, hey, you are doing it already. Would you like to have officially the title? It's like, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, my life is not going to change. I was like, no, just do what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so it was quite, quite easy, you know, that transition and quite unexpected for me. Like I was not purposely doing it or anything. It just yeah. came. So, yeah. What was your job title before you became an art director? Um, I was doing many things. I was doing concept art and, and storyboard and matte painting and textures. So I was kind of doing everything um, in the pipeline, a lot of things. I was really fortunate that I got offered the opportunity to do all of those. So I was kind of, I think that's also why I had like a very broad vision, you know, of how the whole pipeline works. And, and my experience as a storyboarder was really valuable because I was able to match both worlds, you know, the, yeah. the story and, and the, the storyboard artist and also the, the production artist. So I could understand both sides. So I was the bridge of those. But I think that the first time that I was proposed, I was, I was doing specifically concept art. And uh, we were doing then some uh, visual, it was for a visual effects show. So uh, I was I was helping the, the comp team. I was doing some comp as well. And I was helping them how to translate the concepts that I was I had done with the client, how to translate them into the screen. And they, they offered it to me like, hey, would you like to do it for the next one? Supervise this? Sure, why not? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, Katie, actually I actually had a question for you with your recruitment coordinator uh, hat on. Is there anything you think that um, when people apply from an art director position, what makes a show what makes show or portfolio or CV jump out, or, or conversely, what makes it look like they're they're instantly not the right person? Um, I guess it's it's people's ability to show a thought process uh, in their work. So um, I, it really ties with what what you guys have been saying the whole time, and it's that kind of ability to to problem solve and recognize what's keeping things like within the style what's keeping the quality maintained so it's really really fantastic to see notes that you've done okay. of 
other people's work or um, or things on project or your region. So it's not about like here's an illustration finished image and it looks perfect. Because as you said, Francesco, it might be super beautiful, but it might not also work with the story or the style of a show. So it's kind of like what are kind of quick variations of that environment or that environment that building or that character that would offer options to a director because as you say it's about kind of vision so it's your ability to put that in a portfolio rather than a perfectly rendered yeah. final piece so you might say to include some kind of paint over notes and stuff to show what you yeah. suggested to yeah. improve something absolutely you know like it's visual development it's the development of something yeah. to get to the visual like concept design it's like concept is like that means idea you're designing ideas not like a final illustrated yeah. image so um yeah any kind of like notes that you can do like initial quick sketches like just like really rough silhouettes things like that are all really useful cool. um i guess what one of the things that anim dojo always tries to do is to give real valuable advice on how people can um what they can do practically to to get towards their career so i wanted to ask you both like uh so if someone's got like really good kind of drawing skills and they go yeah okay i think i could be a concept artist but i want to be an art director what could they do if they're you know they've got a bit of time on their hands like tomorrow or whatever what 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 exercise or activity would you recommend that they do to try and get towards an art director rather than just a uh, not to say just but rather than a concept artist which they may be good at already uh, has anyone got any ideas on on that? Well, if you're in that position, what do you do? Who's going to go? Yeah. Francesco, do you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, okay, that's okay. That's a challenging question because okay, uh, what I will do tomorrow? Okay, I'm supposing I'm I'm a guy who who likes to draw. Uh, maybe he is quite good at it, but doesn't know how to get to an art director. So probably tomorrow uh, I will start doing a personal project in which I explore, like I think about the story or I take a story from a book and I start drawing all of that, thinking about the production point of view. So it's not thinking about doing something beautiful, but thinking about communicating to people how that would work. For example, it's key, even, even say, okay, to do this story, we need three different stones, three different trees, and you do a breakdown of that and you explain why. Uh, it's more like playing with Lego, for example. Uh, Jacques, Jacques Gauthier, he was my extra director, and he taught me that. He taught me, okay, when you have to plan stuff, like don't think about design. Think about playing with Lego. So you have just boxes, and you have to put things with boxes, and that's what you have to do all the time. Uh, so it's showing that kind of process in which like, uh, you are building an environment just by boxes, saying, okay, the character is this size. The, it's still what Katie was saying, it's the thought process. So... The first thing that I will do uh, will be like doing a personal project with that kind of thought process and a lot of line drawings. I said, guys, I think line drawings is the key. I see a lot of portfolio with nice paintings. The thing is painting can lie. Painting can lie. Like, I'm not <laughs> sure about you. You can even spend ages on a painting. And like, I, I, I don't really know who you are. I think the real, the, your soul is the line. As soon as I see you doing one line, I can understand who you are and how you draw. But if I see paintings, I'm never, I never trust you 100% because I know, okay, I don't know how you got that there. You could even have done a paint over on something. So I love uh, that. That's a, that's a very nice way to put it. it yeah, is, carry yeah. on. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, like line drawings is really key. And another thing that I will do is just do another thing, like something that doesn't relate at all with art on our direction. Like, I don't know, I'm doing boxing. I know that's not a team kind of, uh, of sport, but I would suggest to do a team sport. Uh, yeah. So uh, I, I think in that way, you can you can really focus on being part of a team. I think yeah. both. And you mentioned be... going, going to the pub as well. <laughs> uh, going to the pub, yeah, yeah. And, and be, Absolutely. <laughs> it's, quite, it's, quite a, it's quite hard because if you are introverted people, like you cannot yeah. ask to change your nature. So... Uh, I think sometimes, like some job require a person who likes to talk or is more extrovert. If you're introvert, 
uh, I don't want to suggest people to change themselves. <laughs> I think. I think. I think on on that note, I've, I've said this in a few different podcasts, but I think there's always a, a people confuse introvertedness with shyness. Being an introvert mm-hmm. is means you enjoy your own time um, probably more than being in a group. Doesn't mean that's and generally that means you become shy because you don't get out as much as other people who love being surrounded by other people which inherently makes you not shy so i think those the people who are introverts to say oh I'm, I'm an introvert uh because i'm shy you need to separate those because they're not they're yeah, not I, welded I, I, together I to- you can decouple I, that <laughs> i totally agree i think um for anyone that knows me or has seen my streams or the podcast would know that i'm definitely not shy but i'm 100 percent. if you want a textbook introvert that's me i'm loving okay. the lockdown i hope we can stay longer. <laughs> I love staying at home and just being by myself. But um, I find, and I don't know if you guys feel the same way, that uh, socializing obviously is really good. But I find that when I'm speaking with people from my own sort of tribe, if you want to call it, artists, I, I have a very different type of energy. It's very different. I don't have that same sort of drain as when I'm like speaking to just the general public. I find that I'm I don't mind sitting and speaking about a shot or animation for such a long time. Um, So, yeah, I think that it definitely is a bonus if you're outgoing because you can probably stand out like to like the important people who can make that decision to help you move along. Um, But I definitely think that even introverts have an advantage in the sense that you have more solitude and you, you, you don't worry about being alone. And I think it can help you to improve as a person and to be confident in your own skin. And I think that's also a skill that, that comes to the table. But yeah, that's kind of my take on it as well, not to stop what you were saying. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's, not, it's not fundamental to be an extrovert, to be an art director. I met so many supervisors that are really quiet people, you know, that they, uh, as, as, as long as they are able to communicate and, and uh, work in the team, you know, and some people inspired by, uh, by communi- uh, like, how can I say, like in the way they speak and, and the energy that they transmit, but other people inspired by the, the quality standard that they set up in the project, you know, so you don't really need to be a highly social extrovert to push the team forward. I have an important question that I think is probably on the mind of everyone that, that is managing a team. Um, do you have to be the best artist to be like, to be a good art director or how do, how do you feel giving feedback to someone who you know is better than you? And, you know, when you're giving them this guidance, because obviously like so many people that I supervise or look after, give notes to, can animate circles around me. But it's, it's more about differentiating between the two skills. So how do you guys look at it? Okay, yeah, I, I think that is better if the art director is not the best one. Um, it needs to be the one that is able to make an image better but that doesn't mean that he's the, the most skilled. And it's better when you have some really, really solid people in your team that is able to give you something that you were not uh, even thinking about, you know? So so everybody, and you, you can learn together. It needs to be someone that is able to put things together and analyze. I think that analytical mindset is the most important. But the logical and analytical sense I, I met so many uh, previous architects and engineers, you know, in this industry that are now art directors. I, I was an architect myself, and oh. and I really think that yeah, I was I was working in China as an architect. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had like three lives. <laughs> you really summarized your journey in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Let's <laughs> <laughs> start that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we need like uh, 15 minutes <laughs> just telling you my whole journey. <laughs> But, but, but it's something that I found out that a, a lot of them evolved in a supervising and an art director role. And I really think it's because the, that analytical mindset, you know, and uh, is very structured and very logical. And uh, when you are an engineer or an architect, you think for 10 hours before you put the pencil on the paper, you know, so you will really ask why about everything. Why should we do it like this? And, and what is the function that this is going to have? So how we can translate that visually. So there, there's a saying, measure twice, cut once, or something exactly. like that. Yeah. 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 Totally. I think there's also always there's also the saying, always hire people that are better than you as well. In terms yeah. of the, kind of like having people that are really good at drawing, um, working working with you. I think anyone who wouldn't hire someone because they're they're worried they're they they might be better than them is 
it's probably not the best way to grow a team. Yeah. Um, uh, Almil, one to... isn't it? Being able to admit yeah. that somebody's better than you. Yeah, and then you know you want to surround yourself with amazing people to make the most amazing work. So it's a bit of a, exactly. a yeah. strange way of operating if you didn't do that. Um, um, I wanted to ask you the same question that I asked Francesca about what would, what would you do if you were wanting to become an art director and uh, you had some had some free time? What would you recommend? I think sharpening your eye is really, really important that you should be able to you, uh, study and analyze the work of the masters, you know, in, in any field like the masters of painting, the masters of cinematography, they call the, the directors of photography and analyze them and uh, stop the frames and see how they use, you know, the composition and the light to tell the story um, and analyze Caravaggio and, and read about the artists. Like the, the more you can research in that sense is going to make you being able to distinguish what is looking better and worse, which is really important for an art director. Uh, and that's a lot of time. Like, I really, really love it, you know, and, and in my free time, I, I'm always going to the museums and so on if I can. But, but yeah, uh, for, I know that some people need to put the time like uh, compulsory, you know, like they just, uh, it's, it's maybe not something that they enjoy a lot, but they just say, okay, for this hour, I'm going to be studying this. And it, it always pays off, you know, because it gives you so many, skills in your mind, you know, so much, so much problem solving in terms of visuals. Um, so I think, yeah, that, that's that's one of the most important things, I will say, apart from what has been said already. Excellent. Cool. Um, do any, anyone have any questions they wanted to throw into the ring? I just wanted to ask um, very briefly, um, what is your current like source of inspiration? Not not like a technique to gather inspiration, but like currently, what is inspiring you? I guess it's more getting to like understand maybe where you are at the moment in life, maybe in terms of what's inspiring you as an art director or as an artist in general, but maybe more specifically like in your work, what, what's inspiring your, your your role at the moment? For me, there are two things life itself which can be really basic and really obvious but it wasn't in the beginning you know i was always trying to copy something or follow something but there was a, a point that something clicked that i discovered that if i if i draw an emotion that i felt or a moment that i shared with someone it translates and people engage so much more with that so i'm constantly pulling inspiration from natural light you know I'm, I'm walking around and see something that i like and i i frame it in my mind or i do a picture and those are the things that i'm drawing lately and that i get more inspired of, about but also illustration in general like comics and illustrations and you know there is so much exploration going on super amazing graphics to the uh, artists doing incredible job so I just, you know, it gets, it gets you this post, you know, every time that, it, that you see someone that is doing something completely off charts and completely new and fresh. That's, that's a really important source for me right now. Oh, mm, how about you, Francesco? Uh, that's quite, quite uh, <laughs> touches a soft spot because uh, I, I lately don't feel inspired. I lately feel zero inspiration and uh, I think like, I don't know, I, I see so many artists. I don't know if that's also Easter, I don't know what's that, but uh, I'm having this year in my career in which I feel zero, zero. Like, I, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't me, like, I, I, I used to draw every day. I used to be really passionate about drawing every day. Uh, so at the moment, that's a good question, but I will ask you, uh, what, <laughs> yeah, what do you feel? Because uh, having hard times finding something that really inspired me to, do something new. Uh, I yeah. think uh, I I don't know stuff. I don't know. I'm well, so I like it. I like I like I like the I like the honesty in the answer because basically mm. I think this is something a lot of people struggle with. Um, myself, I've struggled with many times in my career as well, where it's it's not that I can't do the job, I can. It's just that it's not coming from a genuine source. It's not really a it's not driven by a, a, a pure interest and passion that once was, you know, like it's almost like instead of it being a fire, it's like the barbecue, you know, when you see just the redness and the coal, mm -hmm. it's just red. That's it. It's just, it's just there. It's glowing, but that's it. And I don't want that. I want the fire again. And I think 
what I found for myself was to accept it for what it is. And like you said in the beginning, like you have these roller coasters. Mm -hmm. And I think it's part of the journey as an artist. It's like someone once said something that in the beginning, you, you want to be somewhere. So you don't see anything wrong with it. You keep striving until you get there. And then when you get there, your eye becomes really good. It doesn't look good anymore. And I think you don't enjoy it. And then you need a new thing to strive for. And mm -hmm. I think you start to, and that's where these cycles come from. And that's kind of part of my journey. I mean, I left working in TV, went to VFX, and then, you know, now I'm doing something completely different. And I think it's, I think it's just part of the artists in all of us that yeah. requires that fuel. And I guess it's, it's, it's just something to kind of embrace and let it take its course rather than um, look at it as a negative. Yeah. It's just, it's just, yeah. it's just, a, I think it's just a way of, of evolving. You're evolving, I guess, is how I see it. it yeah. It's an important thing where, you know, for any, any creative artist to, to keep that, keep that fire burning. It's, but it is, it is equally hard when you do a job kind of day in, day out, you know, it's uh, to, you know, to, to keep pushing forward. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. I think um, we're, we're running out of time now. It's, we've been uh, talking for our, our allotted uh, time um, so I think hopefully uh, that's some amazing advice there thank you uh, both of you so much Thanks. and hopefully thank people you. do want to become an art director there's some invaluable takeaways in terms of what you can do to uh, to go away and really practice that uh, you know as, as everyone said um, it's it's you know sounds like it's more important about the, the those communication skills than about those soft skills. Sorry, then about the creative skills, but it's it's all about communicating the creativity, I guess. Okay. Cool. So uh, thank you so much, Almu and uh, Francesco. Um, also, thank give you. a shout out your, if you guys have any social media that you want people to check out. If you've got like Instagram or Twitter or whatever you guys want people to follow, make a shout out. We can also put it in the description and link it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm in mean, every platform. So if you put Almu Redondo everywhere, I'm there. Cool. So you can find me easily. Uh, yeah, and I have an Instagram account, so you can find me uh, under Frenzy Fresh or Francesco Mazza, M A Z Z A, and I usually post stories and work work stuff. So, yeah. cool. cool, and uh, I'm sure Grace can put those in the show notes as well <laughs> on on YouTube, so people can uh, look at both your amazing work. Um, uh, on, the, on the subject of Instagram, I think uh, there's obviously this is we, we publish this podcast on on Instagram stories and it's also on YouTube and SoundCloud and other podcast platforms. So um, please do subscribe to all of those if you want to hear all the uh, upcoming podcasts. And I think on YouTube, we've got a, a quite a big back catalog of podcasts talking about all the uh, interview tips where we talk to all the big studios um, including um, Axis and a lot of the others uh, in terms of uh, showreel tips, portfolio tips, preparing for interviews, the whole lot. There's hours of material there. So it's uh, do go and uh, dig out and give it a listen. And also do check out our, our website, uh, animdojo.com, where uh, it's divided into different job title rooms and we're looking to add more of them. So really hope we'll be able to get an art direction room there at some point to give all of this advice. And uh, the idea of those rooms is to have exercises so for example if we had an art direction room one of those things could be an exercise of doing um kind of those paint overs given some material so that's kind of how it works so and that's why it's an animation gym it's it's lots of hands-on exercises like you both kind of suggested for getting better and getting reaching that career so i think that's it so thanks again to everyone and thanks to you for uh, listening or watching depending on where you're, you're watching it so uh, until next time, uh, cheers and goodbye. Thank cheers you. All. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.